Java, Classes and Objects. We're starting to move into object-oriented programming. So I want to walk you through what classes do. Okay, so as you see here, we've seen the word class here. And we're going to use this class to describe a person. Okay, we're going to make this a uh, class that's going to create a person. Okay, so what we want to think of is that a class is a blueprint. Okay, that's going to make an object. Okay, and in this case, that object is going to represent a person. Okay, so that's the game plan. A class is a blueprint that creates objects, and in this example, we're going to make a person. So let's just sort of walk through it here. And then uh, this first part here, we'll talk about making uh, the class. And then the second part, we're going to talk about how to actually use that in the main program. So I want to point out a few things here. First off, we've got some variables going on here. So we've got a thing here called first name, last name, city, and state. And I want you to notice here right here that's called private. Okay, that means that the only thing that can see these variables are the functions in this class. Okay, so uh, whatever program that's going to call this, create the object from this, they will not be able to see these variables. Okay, this is called data hiding. Okay, and we do this for several reasons, but the, for the first and foremost is probably security. Okay, because we don't want people tampering with our values. Okay, so the only things that can see these uh, variables is, are those functions that are within the this set of braces for this class. So, how do we get the values for those variables? Okay, well we basically set up a function to do that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a function here called set first name. Okay. Now remember, this is going to be called from the main program. So the main program is going to set the first name. The main program is going to set the last name. The main program is going to set the city name. Okay. So that's why we use the word set in the description of these functions. So we're setting this up here. So we're going to make it public. That means that any other program, any other function, any other class, any other object can see this function. It's going to be a void, just like we've normally set those up before. We're going to use set in the name of our function name. String, okay, and I'm going to have here just a generic variable name called new value. So the main program is going to supply the new value and this function is going to set that value to x first name. Okay, let's look down on the second part here. We set this up as public so that any other program okay, can look at this. We're going to set it to void, set last name, so the main program is going to supply a variable for new value and put that in here for x last name. I've got a few more variables that we're going to do here. So we got one here we're asking for the city name. Same principle. Main program is going to give it a new value, supply the new value, and we're going to store that next city. Okay, here we're also asking for the state name. The main program is going to set the new value and it's going to store it into the state. Okay, so we're going to use that set command or set functions to supply this class with values for our object. Now you're saying, well, how do I get information out of this class? 
How do we get information out of that object? Well, we have to write some functions to do that. So, I've got one here called get full name. Okay, now remember, this is being called by the main program. The main program wants to get some information from the object. So in this case, it wants to get the full name. So what are we doing with this uh, function here? We're making it public. Okay, so the main uh, program can see it. We're going to return a string. Okay, so we're going to return a string. So I've got a variable here called string full name. So what are we going to do? We're going to concatenate the first name with the last name, and then we're going to return the full name back to the main program. Look down here. How does the main program get the city that we uh, supplied to it? Okay, we're going to do public string get city. We're going to return the city name. I got to cut two more examples here. Here, it's called get state. Okay, so so the main program is going to ask from this object, what? How do I get the state from you? So it's going to say, please get the state, and we're going to return x state back to the main program. Now I included here a uh, an example of a function here that actually does something here. So. What's going to happen here is the main program is going to ask for an income calculator. So we're going to so the main program is going to supply the number of years times the yearly salary, so we can get that number of uh, that salary over a number of years. So once again here is we set up a little answer variable, multiply the two things together, and we're going to return answer. Once again, this is public. It has to be public so the main program can see it. And it tells the main program we're going to return a double. So I want you to uh, uh, keep in mind here two things. I'm going to scroll up here just a little bit. So we're going to use the concept of setting Okay, a value to the class. Okay, so we're going to use the setting concept where we're going to supply the value from the main program and store that into a private member. Okay, and in order to get information out, okay, so the main program wants to get information from the class or object. Okay, we're going to use the word get. Okay in our function name. So we're going to get information out. So we need to re, uh, return a data type. Okay, and all of these here have to be public. Now, do all your function stuff have to be public? No. You can supply the information to the class, to the object, and if there's some internal calculations that you want done, you can make those private. And then you can give it another av avenue of a get to get it out. So, that's a quick little walkthrough of a class of what we're going to use here to represent a person. Okay, so this is our class, person. So in this next little part here, we're going to see how we can use this class person in our main program to represent people. So that's the end of the first part here on classes and objects.